Okay, I'm recording. And cool. There we go. Okay, great. And we're off. We awesome. Are... Yay. <laughs> welcome, everyone. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Welcome to uh, Going Beyond Pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting how many people is inter interested in that topic. So, yeah, in Access, yeah. we have a lot of tools, so we are going to explore tonight what else is possible <laughs> and i'm here yeah. with let, let's introduce you a little bit <laughs> okay uh so i'm here with uh dr anthony mattis amazing facilitator that i super adore so how did i get so lucky to be able to explore that topic with you tonight and with all of you who are watching this being present oh, now chef Manuel. <laughs> I will just mute uh, everyone. So, yeah, Anthony is, how long have you been facilitating access classes so far? You are muted, so maybe I muted you. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. Been, no, I've been in access for eight years now. <laughs> Is that me? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Eight awesome. years. Okay, great. And you're also a three-day body class facilitator. So you have a lot of experiences with changing the pain. Let's say that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I've also been a chiropractor for the last 20 years of my life as well. So I've been, you know, working with people's bodies for a really, really long time. And even before that, I was like a personal trainer and I used to help people get in shape too. So I've worked with people and their bodies probably since 1986. <laughs> oh, wow. You know? So a really, really, really long time. And But one thing that I can say that, you know, that I like that I've experienced and watched with people in their lives and in their bodies is that one of the biggest things that cause pain in their body or in their life mm -hmm. is the unwillingness for them to experience their own capacities, their own powers, their own potencies. And when we hide them, when we refuse to be everything that we are, mm -hmm. it causes pain. It creates pain, not only physical pain, but a lot of times mental pain. And, and that is something that I noticed long before I even started Access. It's just that I didn't have the tools like we do in Access to help people to unlock all those things that are beyond their cognitive mind that's causing them to stay stuck, mm -hmm. right? To, to, to not be able to break through those things that hold them back from being everything that they're capable of being. And so it was very frustrating for me because you can give people advice, you can encourage people, but unless those things that are energetically blocking them, keeping them back, dissipate or loosen up, it's very challenging for people to, to, to make that choice. Mm -hmm. So so you are, thank you for that. So you're kind of talking that pain is actually changeable or that pain is not what we think it is. So... Yeah. yeah, what if it wasn't what we thought it is at all? Mm -hmm. And, cool. um, yeah, you know, yeah, and you know, again, what if it is simply a power <laughs> that mm -hmm. we're not willing to experience? Yeah, I love that. What if pain is the power that we are not willing to have or experience? And yeah. also, what if, like, Gary Douglas, uh, the founder of Access Consciousness, uh, is talking about that about like that the pain is the awareness that we are not willing to receive or to have. Correct. So you can like uh, play also with that question if you are feeling or having or perceiving pain. It's like, what am I aware of that I don't want to be aware of? Or like what awareness yeah. I am avoiding? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's beautifully said because, you know, one of the things that we, we teach in Access Consciousness, for those of you who haven't even had an Access class, one of the first things you learn is that 99% of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and even pains in your body don't even belong to you. Mm 
So that leaves the new person coming to an access class be like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I've had these problems for 20 years, 30 years. This anxiety has been mine. This depression has been mine. The doctor said I have these chemical imbalances or I fell off the ladder and I broke my back. Of course, this low back pain is mine. Hmm. But, you know, our bodies are self-healing. They're self-regulating. The body has the ability to heal itself. But why do some people who've broken their backs have no pain? <laughs> and why do other people who break their backs still have pain? And so what we start to explore in the, um, the three-day body class is to we, we facilitate the participants in learning how to use the awarenesses that their body's giving them, uh, also known as the pain or the intensities that are showing up, to give us information as to actually what we're really aware of. And it could be things that uh, we could be aware of the earth, we could be aware of what's going on in other people's bodies, or it could simply be capacities that we're not willing to acknowledge within ourselves. And that's sort of what we do in the three-day body classes. We begin to show the people the, the different tools that they could use to start using all the, this information that their body's giving them for actually greater awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautifully said. And like also the basic tool that it's like um, every time appropriate to use, it's like the question, who does that belong to? Because I see so many people who would like to like change the pain or like heal the pain or something, but it's if it's not even theirs, so if it's not even yours, you cannot change it. You can just acknowledge that, does, that this pain which is usually just intensity or the pain that you are aware of. It's like, it's not yours. So who does that belong to? Who does that belong to? Like 50, 100 yeah. times and it can just like dissipate. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can play with that question as well. And also like so many people, I mean, talk a lot about pain like it's usual it's so common in this reality like if i go with down down there for a coffee or like in a coffee shop everyone is talking about like suffering <laughs> uh pain so i wonder like what we could create if we start putting that much energy into like enjoying into being hedonistic like talking about how we have enjoyed our bodies this day or today and like looking more for joy and pleasure seeking pleasure instead of seeking pain so how much are you seeking pain instead of seeking pleasure what if you can look at that and maybe allow yourself to enjoy more and is there is also one strong point of view that it's right to suffer or right to have pain or that you're kind of right yeah. so well, that that is a common point of view around <laughs> the world that you yeah. know it's like we have to suffer we have to suffer this existence mm -hmm. you know and especially for those people that might be very religious certain particular religions it's very much about suffering and that things will get better when you die and you go to heaven. <laughs> That's a strong point of view in a lot of religions. But I'm like, you know, growing up, when I used to hear those sorts of things, I'm like, but wait a minute, but I'm alive right now. I have this body right now. It's like, I want to enjoy this body. I want to have ease with this body. Um, it's like you gave me all these amazing body parts. It's like, am I just supposed to like have to live in this box and not get to enjoy it, you know? And it's like, what are we doing this for? Why do we even have a body if we can't even have fun with it and enjoy it and, and treat it with uh, kind, caring, nurturing, healing energies? And so, but most of us that are on this call are healers in their own right, even if you're not even in the healing profession. And it's like, so we, when we do walk into a cafe and we hear these conversations, and sometimes, a lot of times, we may not even physically hear the conversation, but we're energetically aware of what's going on in people's universes. So we sometimes may walk into the cafe like, yay. And then we walk out of the cafe, be like, oh, what happened to me? And, and again, it's just awareness. It's like us by being us can walk into um, a cafe and we can heal literally everybody in there but then we're sort of at the effect of it, right? So it's like, how do we make life easier for us 
for those of us who have this strong desire to heal people wherever we go. And that's what's beautiful about the tools of access conscious because they help you to use these capacities to your advantage. They help you to use these tools so that you're not at the effect of, of your capacity so that when you do walk into a cafe, you can actually be the invitation. You can be the energy, you can be the potency of what living a life of ease and joy and glory can be. And it's simply by you being you, wearing what you like to wear because it makes your body feel good, eating what you like to eat because it makes your body feel good, allowing those hedonistic pleasures to contribute to your body and you know and in such a way that it enriches your being and then people start to look at you be like what is it that she has like i want some of that what is it that he has i want some of that and then they'll say are you on a special diet are you wearing special makeup and you're like no i mean it really just is energy it's a, and it's the willingness to allow and this is another beautiful thing that the tools of access create for you because they have created for me and it's available for all of you is when you receive the bars, when you receive these body processes, it, it creates this space for you to learn how to receive at a much, 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 much higher level. And so everything, you start to notice how everything communicates with you. Everything contributes to you. Even the dog shit in the snow contributes to you. As long as you don't have a point of view that it's dog shit, <laughs> right? It can actually contribute to you in a way that makes your life easier, right? And so one of the things that Gary says, that Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, is that um, for every point of view you take, for every point of view you take, it creates a physical solidification that locks into your body. For every point of view you take, it creates a physical solidification that locks into your body and eventually it can create pain, right? So it's like, there's all these different tools that we learn that you're provided with in all these classes so that you can actually have more ease with your awareness, not less. And these are part of the things that help us to go beyond the pain in our lives, not just physical, but also mental pain too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would like to ask you more about those, uh like not physical pains, but like mental pains or like, um, but let me just add one thing because um, what you said, it's like, it's so true. And it's also like, when we are aware, we cannot turn off the, like being aware, like our awareness. So yeah. like, like the, if you have, if you are experiencing a lot of pain with your body, with this body in this lifetime, you probably, or I'm sure that you have a lot of capacities with healing and with your body. So what if your weaknesses are actually your capacities or strongnesses? It's like, and if you want a knowledge, the capacities that you have, you will be in effects of them. Like this is what I was like experiencing. And it's like, um, what if you just acknowledge that you are a healer because you are? <laughs> um, and it's if you start acknowledging that and like really acknowledge that you can heal other people and other bodies and take their pain away, kind of, but you still don't have to lock it into your body to make sure it won't go back to them or something. It's just like the capacity and the acknowledgement that you have to give yourself because it will actually set you free. And how can you use this to your advantage? And like, what else is possible? What if we are so willing to heal other people's pain and bodies, what, why are we not willing to heal our body and ourselves? Yeah. So. And that's beautiful. That's a, that was very well said. And that's a great question. And, and a lot, you know, how many people have the point of view that in order to heal others, that we have to lock it in our bodies, mm -hmm. we have to take the pain out of all of our bodies. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of us have that point of view, right? When I, once when I got to access, I had tried all these different techniques, all these different modalities. My, uh, my first wife committed suicide from mental illness, bipolar disorder. And it was like, I was like crying in my first foundation class. Cause I was like, I'm tired of trying to fix people. I'm tired of trying to heal people. I can't, I can't do it anymore. 
And what's beautiful about facilitating access consciousness is that you don't have to heal anyone. Okay, you're just really the space of invitation and you invite people to choose for themselves and you show them the tools, you present them with the tools, but the tools are all designed to create space in their universes. We don't have to do anything about it. The tools are designed to create the space in their universes and now they finally have this space and they can kind of walk into that space and start making choices to create the lives that they actually desire. And so, so Sarah has a question. She says, how can I have communion with my body? I feel like I'm not connected with it. And sometimes I'm like uh, uh, blocked and freeze, but, but, it's, but, but my something is light. I, didn't, I couldn't understand the rest. But as far as having communion with your body, all these tools that we learn in access consciousness, the bars, the body processes, doing the verbal facilitation, they're all designed for you to have more communion, not only with your body, but with everything. And for many of you may have been abused, let's say, in your lives. You may have been abused verbally. You may have been abused um, physically from others. Maybe you abuse yourself with all the judgment that you say to yourself just when you look in the mirror. I mean, that's a form of abuse too. So what happens a lot too when we've been abused is we've, we check out of our bodies. We spend our lives like, watching ourselves from out here right and so we're not quite connected even like when we're having sex even when we're trying to enjoy the hedonistic pleasures of life right it's like we're watching from the outside mm -hmm. and so there's really no one answer to your question Sarah there's no one tool I can give you it's really all the tools together but what I can tell you and I can promise you in time with using these tools, you will have greater communion with your body. You'll have so much communion with your body that it may even be overwhelming at first because you're like, oh my God, this is exhilarating. I mean, I, I didn't know it could be this amazing. And I, it, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care if you've been so abused. We have tools for that. Mm -hmm. we and have body tools. processes. Yes. And so, and like you may have the memory of the abuse, but it doesn't have to have that energetic stronghold over you ever again. And again, but it takes time. When that will all show up for you, I can't answer that. We're all on our own little journey, mm -hmm. but it will because I've tried all the modalities. I've had the gurus. I've done, um, you know, spirituality in church. I've done breath work. I've done it all. I promise you I've done it all. And I have not come across anything so powerful as the tools of access consciousness. And there's so many, it's not just one thing. And the bars is just the beginning of it. The three day body class is the beginning of teaching you how to use all the yucky things going on in your body, all the pains, all the insanities in your mind, how to actually change it to like oh my god this isn't really pain my body's actually giving me awareness or these are capacities that i'm not willing to acknowledge because i'm afraid i'm going to kill everybody if i'm willing to be all of me or if you're a parent and you have children you might have the point of view that if i'm all of me that means i have to live leave my husband or i have to leave my wife or i have to leave my children i can't possibly be all of me and still be part of my family well, what if that was just an interesting point of view? What if by you being all of you invites your husband or wife to be more of them? What if being more of you invites your children to be more of them? And for me, choosing access, I'll be honest with you, my kids chose access consciousness before I did. Because my first bars class, I'm like, eh, I don't know if this is helping me. But I watched the boy, my boys, my two boys, I have a daughter too. She didn't attend the first bars class, but I watched both my sons. They were 11 and nine. And I watched the ease it created in their universe. And it was only nine months after their mother died. So my point of view at the time was I'm a lost cause. There's no hope for me, but I'll just keep coming back for my kids because I know these tools are going to help them. I'm, I'm a lost cause. That was my point of view. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> I remember it was my third bars class. And like the guy who was working on me had no clue about energy work whatsoever. And he changed my life. The energies that I experienced, 
I thought I was going to vomit all over the place. Okay. That's number one. And then my brain just started spinning like this. And that's when I realized like, I was like, okay, there's something to this work. And I remember waking up the very next day and I felt like God put a brand new brain in my skull. And I had all this joy in my universe. And then I had this little voice go, you're not supposed to be this happy. Your wife has only been dead for nine months. I really had that voice come in my head. But it's like, whose point of view is that? Why don't I have the right to be happy? Why don't I have the right to have joy in my life? Do I have to suffer forever because someone killed themselves? Because I'm a single father raising three kids alone? I can't have joy? Whose point of view is that? I used to, I know I'm talking a lot, I'm sorry. But you know, it's like I had people from my church come to my chiropractic clinic like three years later and they would say, are you okay? I had a dream and the Lord said, I need to come to visit you to see if you're okay. And I remember saying to them, yeah, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. And she looked at me and she's like, what? How could you be happy? You're a single father. Your wife killed herself. But it's like, with the tools of access, it's like I found these energies that matched what I always knew was possible as a child. But nowhere in my reality, I could find it. I couldn't find it in religion. I couldn't find that in my parents. I couldn't find that in my friends. I found it in nature a little bit. You know, but, and what's beautiful about these tools is not only do they invite you to be more of you, not only do they invite you to have more awareness so that you can change the pain in your body, so that you can change the things in your life that aren't working for you, but there's no limit. There's no limit. It's like infinite. It's like there's no ceiling. There's no level that you get to. It truly, truly goes on and on and on and on and on forever. And that really is the invitation um, that we have for you as facilitators is like, come play. Because here's these tools. We're not here to try to fix you. We're not here to try to give you answers. We're here to ask you questions so you can get the awareness yourselves so that you can go, oh, my God. You mean that's me? That's what I have available? And it's like, uh, yeah. And sometimes some of you will go, no, I don't want that. It's too intense. <laughs> right? And it's like, and then you create more pain. <laughs> it's like, don't do that. Don't do that. It might be intense at first, but so what? That intensity is you. That intensity is your power. It is your capacity to change whatever's not working for you in your life. Now I'll shut up. <laughs> no, it was brilliant. So thank you for that, Anthony. And also, what I would like to add, it's like, when we are aware, we don't have to do anything with this awareness. It's just the acknowledgement. Sometimes just the acknowledgement is required. So don't be scared to be aware. It's like I was avoiding awareness because I thought I have to do something with that what I'm aware of, but yeah. it's not like that. It's just like acknowledge it and then you can ask a, a question. Can I do something with that? Or do I like, or can I change it? Or is just like just an awareness? And I see there is also many facilitators, bars facilitators uh, and foundation facilitators. So also don't make yourself responsible for the change that your participants or clients are um, get like receiving or something it's just like as anthony said it's really we are inviting we are being the invitation for others to change or choose something different and we are not responsible or you don't have to heal heal it or something because when we are doing kind of healing we are being superior and it's like we are more empowering than healing so yeah yeah um, and also like um, one more home home play <laughs> from me. It's like, what if like every like be like be willing to enjoy more with your body, as Anthony said. Like be more hedonistic, um, and don't judge yourself while you are enjoying. Because like I acknowledge like every time when I'm kind of enjoying something or like eating a cake or like doing something which is for me which i define pleasure or something i at the same time have still this energy of judgment like what do we eliminate that and like what can we create with our bodies and really what else can we be 
with our bodies that we have never been before. And it's like really, it's like if you can perceive the energy, it's like there is a whole new reality opening up right now. It's like that we cannot imagine, like what if there won't be, like what if we, like I won't say what if there won't be pain because if pain is just, uh, if not what we think it is, it's just pain and um, we still have more possibilities. But what else is possible um, if we go beyond the pain? Um, so yeah, if, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know how many new people are, are on this call, but you know, someone's asking, "How can I stop daily anxiety that gives me fear of death and pain daily?" And access you know, bars, access bars, access bars. Yeah, I mean, bars, if, bars. You, if you haven't done a bars class, Tracy, please, you got to find a facilitator in your area and start getting your bars ran immediately. And you know, what if your anxiety is just awareness? What if you're aware of other people's fears? What if you're aware of other people's, you know, um, you know, anxiousness and worry about all the different things in our life? What if it was just awareness? Mm -hmm. What if it's just awareness symptoms? And so, but again, this is not, I can't, you know, Nadia and I can't just say it's this, right? This is something that you actually have to explore yourself with the tools. And these are the things that you learn when you take the classes, but receiving the bars, that's the first place that you start. And then once you go to a bars class, get yourself to a foundation class because you will learn the 10 keys to freedom. You will learn that fear is a distractor implant. Okay. It's not real. We make it real. This reality says it's real. The only time that we should have fear is if a brown grizzly bear is chasing us in the woods, right? The only time you should have fear, right, is if like a, you know, someone with a knife is going to attack you. So you either run, <laughs> you use that fear to run or to fight, <laughs> right? But that's an appropriate fear. But the fear that you're talking about is like, I'm having fear for no reason at all. I'm freaking out all day long. That's called awareness, honey. Tracy, that's awareness. That's all it is. It's awareness. And so now you're like, okay, but what do I do with this awareness? You got to learn the tools. That's all I have to say. And these tools, without a shadow of a doubt, can, can um, save people's lives. I mean, look at Dr. Dane here. Watch his YouTube video about like how access came into his world. He was suicidal. And one bar session changed his life. He didn't have the desire to commit suicide. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be like that for you. But eventually it will <laughs> eventually it will so again any kind of mental stuff that's going on what if it wasn't mental at all what if it was just awareness symptoms mm -hmm. and again we have a million different tools to help you to change it it's just i can't just say one thing and say it's this <laughs> that are to be it's something that we would have to explain and then, then we get to the body class after the foundation where like nadia and i are going to be uh, facilitating together in the summer and then i think you and Vlad vladika will be doing something when are you doing your first one in february yes after valentine's day 15th Yay! Yay. perfect <laughs> yeah and in that class you all explore how to use these awarenesses and not make them so real and you just have to keep going. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Mm -hmm. What's this question say? It's like, what else can we choose and receive instead? It's, I don't know why it's cutting off. I can't read it for me. Uh, and Tracy is also saying, like, I have just completed the bars class, which is amazing. 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 But some days it's intense. 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 Yeah. Cool. Just, just keep going. Keep How going. many days a week are you getting your bars ran? All right, if you have daily anxiety, honey, then get your bars ran every day or at least three to four times a week and have the person running your bars spend a lot of time on kindness, gratitude, peace, and calm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, and then the next step would be get to a foundation class and just start using the tools. One key thing that's very important, like Nadia said earlier, with access, you're going to become more aware, not less aware. You're going to become more aware not less aware. So for those of you who are hiding from your awarenesses, not your best choice. Mm -hmm. You will be provided with tools to learn how to, when the information comes in, when your awarenesses start to come into your universe, you'll learn how to use this awareness 
to create a life of ease and joy and glory. In the beginning, it may be really intense because your awareness is actually getting stronger with access, with the bars, with the tools. Okay, so just whatever you do, don't run from it. You're not going to die, even though some of you might feel like you're gonna die. Mm. Make it a point to get your bars ran on a regular basis, at least three to four days a week if you can do it. Mm. Okay. And also for all those mental illnesses, what I would, would recommend, and Tracy, if it's light for you, like Anthony is also talk to the entities facilitator, and I will remember like his class forever. <laughs> it was such an empowerment. And it's like, uh, you also said like that with the tools uh, from talk to the entities, we could change the face of mental illnesses on the planet. So yeah. it's like, yes what if those tools uh, could contribute to you also so yeah. in access we really have a lot of different tools and like with all of that uh, i think the awareness around entities is super appropriate so it yeah. can help a good lot call. good mm. call and if you're someone who doesn't see ghosts with your eyes it doesn't matter because we all have the ability to perceive no being receive the spirit world whether you believe it or not. And it's funny that I'm saying that because I was the person when I first started Access that was like, this stuff is all bullshit <laughs> with entities. And it really wasn't until about three years ago where I, just, I really started to explore that universe and it's really changed my life dynamically. And I realized that a lot of the mind stuff that I had going on in my world was actually related to entity awareness. Mm -hmm. So Tracy, please explore that. Again, whether it's me or with someone else, it doesn't matter, but the tools are available. You know, Shannon O'Hara, the creator of Talk to the Entities, she says that the, those tools were created out of desperation, that she would either be dead now or locked up in a mental institution with paranoid schizophrenia, mm -hmm. okay? But the Talk to the Entities tools provided her the space to be able to use her awarenesses to create her life, not destroy her life. Because keep in mind, a lot of our capacities don't fit this reality. So we feel lost, we feel alone, but you're not alone. Yeah. You're all infinite beings. Mm -hmm. You're all infinite beings, every one of us. Therefore, everything dwells inside of you. Mm. Everything, the good and the bad and the ugly. <laughs> But that's exciting because that means you have everything available to you mm -hmm. at all times, as long as you don't have points of view about stuff. And what if the pain is just the power? Like, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't that be exciting? Yeah, this is so exciting. Even like physical, like what's the other expression? It's physical and what's the other pain? Mental? Yeah, mental or like the pain when like you are, you know, in love and then you are, you perceive this pain because it's not like, what, what's, the, what's the English expression like uh, of that pain? Uh, love sick, being sick okay, in love. But not just from love. It's like, in Slovenia, we have an expression for all those that are not physical, but not mental, something kind Yeah, of. it's just called insanity. <laughs> okay, insanity, okay. And what if the, like, this is also the power that you are, like, refusing yeah. to have? Yeah. Um, so play with that question in all kind, every time when you experience pain, and maybe it will shift or frack, uh, like. Play with that question and always play with yourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's supposed to make everybody laugh. Yeah, <laughs> they're muted, but they're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> they're laughing on the inside. Cool. Their faces just aren't showing it. <laughs> cool. All right, awesome. Great. Well, I hope to see you someday in person. Me and too. Nadia, you know, good luck. I can't wait to hear about your your first three day body class in February. And yes, and please, everyone, you. there's so many free resources too available. Oh, I just put. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, there's actually because Nadia's been talking about hedonism a lot. There's a free <laughs> video where I talk about the elegance of bodies in my experience with driving around in Dr. Dane here's uh, Ferrari. And I realized in that moment how decadence, hedonism, um, um, sensualness, like all those different things, how there's such a contribution to your body 
and your life. And so it's a free video. If you understand English, hopefully, you, you know, it'll be, it's great. So it's, it, if you, my YouTube channel is Dr. Ant, Dr. Anthony Mattis. It's called The Elegance of Bodies. Just find it and you'll enjoy it. Great. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much thank for your you time. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. And we hope to see you around the world someday. Yes. Thank you. And thank you, Anthony. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>